The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM on Tuesday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got markets in positive territory to kick things off. You talk about a day yesterday, man. The volatility in these markets, folks, you almost cannot overstate the volatility going on. You jump over to the VIX. 36.64 before the markets roared back yesterday. We finished the day at about 32 on the VIX. We're trading right now at 31.68. Jumping back to the S&Ps. I mean, this chart we're looking at, the move yesterday does not look even as ridiculous as it was. You kick things off, folks. You're talking about 100 points to the downside and then back to the upside. This is a 15 minute chart. That is intraday. You did 100 points in both directions. That's almost two and a half percent in both directions. You traded from 41.65 down to 40.56. Okay, so that is about 109 points to the downside from 1030 in the morning until 2.30 in the afternoon. And then in the final hour and a half of the trading day, you traded up folks exactly 100 points almost to the tick 4056 is the low and we come into 4156.25 we made it 100 points and a quarter to the upside after trading down 109 points you're currently trading almost right where you were as we kicked off the acceleration to lower prices uh, again you cannot overstate the moves nasdaq 100 we actually accelerated above where we were early in the day. 13,000 down to 12,700. We're back to 13,100 this morning. You have the Dow trading at 33,000. We were at 32,358. You're talking about 650 points down and up in the Dow. Bitcoin, 38,395. You got Ethereum right now trading at 2836. We jumped to commodities. Gold, quite a day to the downside yesterday. We make a low overnight at 1849. You have gold flat on the session technically at 1864. We're about 15 bucks off the lows from this morning though. You jump to crude. Little volatility yesterday in crude as well. We're sitting at almost 104, 103.86 in the price of crude and we jump too. Excuse me, the all important notes and bonds. We got the 10 year slight reprieve right now. We touched two points, not two, we touched 3% yesterday, folks. I was talking about it on my program. Uh, it was quite an acceleration. Zooming in on the action yesterday, right? Program began at 9 a.m. There's your 9 a.m. bar. We're at 118.22. By the end of the day, you were at 118.06. You make it to 118.04 and change overnight. And since then, slight reprieve. We got the 10 year yield right now sitting at 2. 2.93%, 2.93%. So we hit 3%, you back off a bit. Still right near that 3% number. The Fed comes out with their announcement tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time, press conference to follow at 2.30, all but assured you'll get a 50 basis point hike. We'll see what the chairman has to say following it in the press conference. Uh, remarkable times we're living in, folks. That is what we'll say to say the least. All right, let's jump around to what we got going on this morning uh, and we're gonna start with a little bit of bearish headlines folks okay and we're gonna kick things off with big stock bears say S&P 500 bottom still another 700 points away Morgan Stanley's Wilson sees the S&P falling to as low as 3460 now I found this interesting okay the group uh, watching for a slide toward the 3500 to 3700 mark okay so after extending its 2022 decline to 13%, S&P is in danger of an even deeper dive in the months ahead, according to technical and macro research team at Strategis, 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 Strategis Research Partners, the group led by Chris, Ver Chris Verone is watching 3,500 to 3,700. That encompasses the gauge 200 week moving average and the midpoint of its entire rally this is the important part, okay? That is the, that is what I'm looking at. It's the midpoint, it's the 50% folks from the entire rally from the 2020 pandemic bottom. A drop to 3,500 would represent an additional 16% loss from Monday's close. Folks, if you don't think the market can pull back 16% in the future, considering what we're coming up against right now, okay? The Fed is gonna begin hiking 
Now, they've already begun, you could say, but they're really going to start bringing it tomorrow. And they're going to bring it for some time, man. We got inflation out of control. Uh, one of the articles I'm going to be talking about is housing. Again, through the roof for housing. Um, the risk is there. Whether it plays out, okay, nobody can be sure. But as our man Larry Pesavento says, don't think about how much you can make, think about how much you can lose, uh, because it's interesting in the terms of the headline here from Paul Tudor Jones, okay? This is out this morning as well. Maybe he was on CNBC, not sure, just jumping around to the headlines. Can't think of a worse financial environment for stocks or bonds right now. I mean, the tough part, right, is that what are you gonna do? Sell stocks and go into bonds? Maybe you got inflation out of control? Okay, so what's that gonna do? That's gonna push the price of those bonds down as yields are rising. You have the Fed pulling back a monumental amount of fixed income asset buying. That is gonna put less of a bid on them. It's gonna allow the price to go down. It's gonna allow the yield to go up. That is the whole purpose of what they're doing. That's a tough time to be in bonds potentially, okay? Uh, and one of the things he said, folks, was capital preservation, which is why I wanted to bring this up, okay? Uh, some of the quotes in here, I think we're in one of those very difficult periods where simply capital preservation is, I think, the most important thing we can strive for. I don't know if it's gonna be one of those periods where we're actually trying to make money. My dad's been talking about it. What's, what's the reason to buy? What's the reason to buy out there? As you're coming into, let alone the Fed, Okay, we got Apple and Amazon saying the next quarter is gonna be tough. And that's like just the beginning of potentially where things go, right? Apple saying we're just starting to see the harsh effect of the China shutdown, supply chain constraints, four to eight billion dollars. Amazon loses money in North America operations. They lose money, period, for the last quarter. They said they're probably gonna lose money this quarter. Again, now I've been an Amazon bull for the long run, folks. This is a time when you get a pullback like that. Um, and keeping in mind, right, Amazon's pullback, going on a little bit of a long-term Amazon bull uh, tangent, part of the reason for Amazon's bull pullback is that they're building out too quickly, right? They built out too quickly and demand started to wane. That demand will pick back up, folks. They're even saying it will pick back up, okay? Uh, I found most remarkable that they had hired almost 800,000 workers over the last two years, almost doubling their workforce. Think about that. Think about the workforce that Amazon had as we came into the pandemic. Monumental, right? Think about the warehouse staff, et cetera. They doubled it. They doubled the staff they had in two years, let alone building out the warehouses, right? They picked up a bunch of uh, airplanes during the pandemic at basement prices, when nobody was flying anywhere, that will pay dividends in the future. But the market is not willing to look a year or two into the future if you tell them the next six to nine months might be a little harsh, especially in this environment. Uh, just keep these words in mind. We're gonna go over some of the charts. We're gonna take a break in a few in a minute. But many on Wall Street have gone more concerned that the central bank could tick the, tip the economy. Some of the points I agree with, I just wanna talk about here. Still in the middle of a pandemic into a recession, aggressive tightening. They've got inflation on the one hand, slowing growth on the other. Uh, they're gonna be clashing all the time. And yeah, they are gonna be clashing all the time. And what else you have? You have war going on, right? You have supply chain issues going on that are going to persist in China, at least for the foreseeable future. You jump back to the S&P, folks. All right, there's your action this morning. We're up by five points. You take a look at a longer term chart. Here's the pandemic low, 2174. The 382 is well within play, folks, of 3,800, and there's your mark, okay? There's your mark for the 3,500 price point, 50% where we are. Finish up this conversation when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? 
That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by six points right now. You're looking at all the markets barely in the positive. Russell just snuck into the red by less than one point. You got the crew contract negative two dollars and twenty eight cents sitting at one oh two eighty nine. Talk about some volatility, man, in gold right now. Flat on the session at eighteen sixty three. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here at Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. Uh, and boy, we got quite a week, man. We got a Fed meeting tomorrow. We got non farm payrolls on Friday. We got earnings coming out each and every day. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, the first day of a Fed of a two day Fed meeting. Welcome to paralysis and analysis. And so all we're going to do is sit around for the next day till tomorrow about uh, two o'clock Eastern and analyze what we think is going to happen, Tommy. And so here's the staff that I think your viewers need to know. The last Fed meeting was March 15th and 16th. And on March 14th, the S&P closed at 4171. And within two weeks, the 29th of March, we had gone up to 4621. Remember, that's when Jerome Powell raised interest rates. He talked about being hawkish and fighting inflation, and we still had a pretty significant, about 450-point rally in the S&P. Since then, it's failed, as you would think, as the rhetoric has teamed up. But uh, don't discount the opportunity for a relief rally coming out of this, because if you look at the 10-day chart or so, when Jerome Powell mentioned he was going to raise rates by 50 basis points, the market has sold off dramatically. So what happens then uh, tomorrow, we'll see what, how Jerome Powell um, focuses his attention going forward. But till then, Tommy, it's kind of interesting. Today and for the next four days, we'll get a bunch of employment data each day. Jolt today, ADP Wednesday, jobless claims Thursday, non-farm payrolls Friday. So we'll get a, a big dose of employment and some earnings. Uh, but, Tommy, the next... 36 hours are all about Jerome Powell. Yeah, I got the chart up in the Thinkorswim platform, man. Just the S&P futures, and yeah, quite a run, man. Uh, March 14th, March 15th, we're making a low right down at about right where we are right now. Charge higher above 4,600 up to March 29th. Uh, and then, as we know, things change. We're right back to where we were, man, at their last meeting, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, so we look forward, like you said, tomorrow's meeting. Now, Kevin, what do you think? Because 
we have a calm market right now for sure, man. We're looking at an S&P within a few ticks of where we closed technically yesterday. The Russell's flat. The Nasdaq is within 29 points. Uh, S&Ps yesterday, Kevin, 109 points down and 100 points up all intraday. What do you think about the volatility just in general, man? Uh, when you're getting two and a half percent moves almost intraday on the S&P, let alone the volatility that the Nasdaq is used to, two and a half percent, man. Uh, whew, wait, wait, what's the general take when you look at a market that is that uncertain almost to where prices be, where two and a half percent every few hours, the whole S&P 500 can train? What's your take on just uh, the volatility in general? I mean, yesterday yeah, and the, throughout. Look at the VIX, Tommy sitting at or near or slightly above 32. It got as high yesterday, I believe, as 35. Yeah, 36, yeah, 64. Than 35 Oof. before it backed off. So, listen, Tommy, there's a lot of speculation, right, about what Jerome Powell's going to say. The overall, hit, you know, stock market with raising interest rates, there's a lot of unknown, and uncertainty makes implied volatility go higher. So, do I know which way the market's going to go? No, I don't. But I do expect it to be movement, it to be choppy. The VIX is telling you that. So there's information in option order flow. So, you know, I think it's interesting that the, that, that the 10 year yield is backing off pretty significantly this morning. But I expect volatility to stay high for the near term. Now, if we rally off this point tomorrow, VIX will come down. But it's still going to stay elevated, right? The all-time average is about 15.39 once it went to the S&P 500 away from the old OEX. I think elevated implied volatilities are here to stay, Tommy. Yeah, it's really remarkable when you think about how many months you got to go forward, Kevin, if not years, that we're going to have some pretty persistent volatility and uncertainty causing that volatility, man. Um, you know, even if all goes well in terms of the Fed, raising rates, uh, soft landing, bringing inflation down, there's going to be many, many months going forward, man. I know you know this, the listeners do as well, but it's just interesting to think about many, many months, if not years, that we're going to be like, coming up on these important economic numbers and saying, okay, is the trend working? Is the Fed going to be impacted? Is inflation back to 3%? Is it back to 2.5%? Uh, we live in interesting times, as the expression man had said many times. I think it applies to where we are right now. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys going to be talking about coming up today on Fast Market at 12? Three good names today, uh, Tommy, w with earnings coming out. Uh, in the first segment, we'll go with Advanced Micro Devices, AMD. And then in our second segment, like Folio, we'll do a presentation on Starbucks, and we'll trade Starbucks. And then we'll finish up with Lyft that has earnings as well. So three good earnings names coming up uh, that, that we'll cover all today on Fast Market. And you got some real pullbacks in all of those, man. These chips, AMD up to 164, back to 90. Starbucks, man, strong, strong company, but 126 back to 75. Remarkable some of the pullbacks we've had in this market going on. Uh, S&P only back about 23%, Kevin, is where they are for the full COVID run, using a little Fibonacci there. Um, but some of these equities, just such harsh pullbacks. The NASDAQ right at the 382. Um, uncertainty, to say the least. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the up update as always man we'll be watching fast market at 12 for those equities and i'm sure you might have a little discussion about this market in general as well kevin we appreciate it man we'll talk to you tomorrow and we'll be watching at 12 today we'll see you then tommy have a great day you too folks tune in every trading day 12 noon eastern time fast market kevin hanks tom white they do an outstanding job of breaking down the nays market action they'll walk you through the general market what's going on they walk you through the hypothetical trade setups yesterday they were talking about airbnb uh great discussion going on yesterday airbnb trading right now they got their earnings after the bell tonight uh just a great discussion overall folks and an outstanding time to check it out when we have volatility in spades as my dad would say all right let's jump back to see what we have going on we'll jump around to some of the fang stocks speaking of amazon amazon yesterday i think it was three percent down and three percent up for amazon you're down to 2367 on the open you charge higher and almost make it to 2500 by the end of the trading day you finish at 2490 man can't overstate this volatility and <clears throat> i tell you folks this volatility is really the most worrisome thing to me in terms of the risk to the downside okay when markets can roll over my opinion 
and this is an opinion, is that they don't roll over instantly, okay? Because you can't just go straight down or everybody figures it out and they sell. The much easier way to go down is to give people hope over and over and over and take that hope away so that they're fearful of selling and missing the next pop upward. If you realize that we have a market, folks, that within yesterday's trading day alone could not accurately price the S&P within 2%, of its determined value, that is not something that normally takes place. That is an absurd amount of uncertainty, and you at least should be recognizing the potential that that uncertainty could play out to the downside, okay? Uh, we're sitting at almost 41.50 in the S&Ps, folks. The low during COVID was 21 and change. We came into COVID at about 3,200. We're almost a thousand points above where we were at just two years ago. We'll finish this conversation up. We'll be back for the open. S&P's flat coming into the open and bell. Stay tuned, If folks. you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got a flat market. We'll see if we get that uh, paralysis through waiting for the Fed for the next 36 hours, as our man Kevin Hinks was talking about. Right now, we're basically at flat. Pretty remarkable in terms of where we were yesterday in the action. So as I was talking about, 2.5%, folks. When the market can't figure out within 2.5% of where it should be intraday, you have to worry that it's very uncertain. And when it's very uncertain, you see what can happen in the likes of some of the multiples of the growth companies, like Kevin's going to be talking about coming up later. You got AMD. These chip companies, man, they were just remarkably strong. Did you ever think that AMD was going to go back to prices you were trading at in August of 2020, folks, after it was up to 165 late November of this year? Uh, that was a similar time frame to Netflix. They are well below that level. But again, Netflix was at 700 bucks on November 15th, folks. It's barely May. 
okay? Uh, what else were they talking about? Starbucks, through the 618 of the entire COVID run it's had, all right? You have very, very strong companies, okay? Now, Starbucks isn't some fantastic growth company that's got a 200 multiple. And meanwhile, Starbucks has given up more than a 618 of its entire run from COVID. You're telling me that the S&P is sitting at the 236 and you should not at least be considering that it has the possibility to trade back to the 382? It's something I'm keeping my eye on, folks. Uh, if you're in a retirement that maybe your days of earning a living wage are past you and you're living on that income that you've secured, Capital preservation right now, folks, because, yeah, it's unfortunate if you didn't sell when we were back up here at 4,600 just a month ago, but you're still sitting at 4,145, folks. There's a very real chance you're at 3,500. There's a very real chance you're at 3,800. All that does is take you back to a pre-COVID level of 3,400. Do you remember the days that many of us said, geez, it would just be nice if COVID hasn't, hadn't happened and destroyed the market because we were coming into things so well at 3,400 in the S&P? Well, yeah, you're still sitting 750 points above that price level. Be aware of where we are, folks, okay? Uh, we're coming into some very dicey times right now, and it's going to persist for a year or two, I would say. Um, this is not going to get – inflation isn't going to go away in three months or six months, all right? It might begin to wane over the next six to 12 months. But even expectations are you're going to get inflation back pretty quickly. This is a rosy scenario. You're going to get inflation back pretty quickly to potentially 3 percent, potentially 3.5 percent. But the push to get it down to 2.5 to 2 percent may be the toughest obstacle of all. And what happens then if we still have a recession breaking into the economy, you still have inflation at above 2.5 percent, dicey scenario that could play out. Keep it on your radar, folks. Uh, as our man Larry says, I talk about it many times. Very important to talk about right now, I think. Don't think about what you can make. Think about what you can lose, okay? Yeah, and all this churn, man, it does create some remarkable trading opportunities uh, in this market. Two and a half percent down and up yesterday, folks. Doesn't even make sense. I actually read one article last week, and I'm going to see if I can find this at the break. It was talking about the NASDAQ 100, over 100 days, okay, let's pull up the NASDAQ 100, because this is one, this is the statistic that really started to give me a little bit of pause. Over the last 100 days, the NASDAQ 100 has traded with an average volatility of 1.6% per a day. Did you hear that? The average move in the NASDAQ 100 over a 100-day period was 1.6%. That is a highly uncertain period of time, folks, and the market hates uncertainty. Can't overstate that one. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities we got moving this morning. We got some companies out with numbers. We'll stay with streaming for a moment. Paramount misses quarterly, quarterly revenue estimates on weak ad sales. So Paramount Plus added 6.8 million subscribers in the quarter, bringing the services total subscribers to 40 million, declines in direct-to-consumer services subscription. Net earnings attributable fell to 433 million from 911 a year earlier. It is a tough deal, man, going into streaming. Let's jump around. Because you got two choices in the streaming sector. You either gotta be the big dog that competes with Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney, or you got to be a niche, play, a niche player that you create something that is worth subscribing to a strong enough part of the consumer base. Oh, I'm not sure where some of these fall. Okay, so Paramount's down 5.7% today. There's your five minute. They spiked to 31.17. They're at 28.44. We'll take a longer term chart of this thing. Uh, the Bill Huang saga, whew, talk about uh, putting a little bit of a bid up there to 101.97. I mean, you just take that out of it though, right? Let's just say you take that out of it completely and you say it bases around 40 for the better part of last year. You're still straight at 28, folks. You're still down 30% from where this thing was coming into uh, the later part of last year for Paramount. Yeah, too many companies chasing too few additional customers. It's a tough one, I agree, Duffy. Um, in my house, I'm thinking about it right now for the first time in a while that we got too many services going on because what do we have? I have Amazon Prime, which I'll probably always keep because it goes well beyond 
what we're talking about with streaming. I very rarely watch Amazon Prime, actually, but I would if I probably cut the cord with some of the others that I'm paying. I have Netflix in the house. I have HBO. Uh, I got Disney. I get the Disney bundle, which comes with ESPN and Hulu. And then we have cable on top of it. Shame on me, right? I should probably be cutting some of those. And when you add it all up, now the, the, the battle there is, what do you cut? I don't know. Uh, HBO's got some great programs coming out. Netflix is something that the kids love and we love as well. Ozark just released their final season. Been watching the, the final six episodes of that. Uh, Disney, the kids love. They watch Frozen every night, right? I, uh, the one thing I will say is I think the Disney bundle is the quickest cut of all because I watch no ESPN Plus. Hulu, some in the house like it, but Hulu is a weird one too because then you have the elevated level of like Hulu Plus or something like that. I don't think that's what you get in the streaming deal, uh, but nonetheless, Paramount selling off down 7.2%. We'll jump to Warner. Okay, now they're paying a price too. They're down 1.8%. We put it back on the daily. This is Warner Brothers Discovery. Okay, this is HBO. You're down 1.8% today. You just pull back from 27 bucks to 17. Uh, this is one I've been looking at. Let's just put it that way. All right, you're right back to almost pre-COVID level, 1712. We just made a low, what I say, 1789? Yeah, 1789 on their earnings. And HBO will be a player, folks, all right? They are led by the CEO that was in charge of Discovery, a streaming veter veteran. And HBO consistently has some of the best content out there, and content is king. There's no doubt about it, okay? Um, I'm watching Succession right now. I'm on the final third season, I think, of Succession. Uh, i got a couple other shows on HBO I want to watch. I saw that there's... Uh, some great documentaries coming out there. George Carlin. There's a George Carlin two-part documentary coming out I want to check out on HBO. Can't wait to check that that one out. Um, but they're all in trouble, man, in a big way. Netflix, you jump over. I'd be real careful of Netflix, man. Down 1.4% because their whole business model is changing. And when you think that you can accurately reflect the price of something when their whole business model is changing. That is a tough one. Disney, we're still in Disney in my newsletter, folks. You're up nine tenths percent today. Uh, and they're in, in a very unique spot, which is why I've been a bull for them so long. They've kind of faced a perfect storm here in terms of pandemic problems, movie theater problems, the parks getting shut down. Um, now they're dealing with streaming problems, okay? But in the long run, folks, there's only one Disney, there's only one Mickey Mouse, there's only one Star Wars, there's only one Marvel Comics, okay? The brands they control in the future are going to pay dividends, let alone the Disney parks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P sitting right above flat. We're up two points right now. NASDAQ barely in the red. You got the Dow up 20 points. Russell positive by one. Crude back above 104 right now. You put crude on a five minute, you get a little bit of an acceleration, man. This crude market. We just got a 102 handle, a 103 handle, and a 104 handle since 9.15 this morning, folks. Okay? Watch out for that crude market. And gold, catching a little bit of a bid after quite a pullback from Friday to Monday. Gold right now up about 5 bucks at 18.68. If you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, great time to do it. My dad's outstanding weekly newsletter. Uh, he's got a new full report out this morning with a couple buys. Uh, so if you're a current subscriber, check that out. If you're thinking of getting into it, uh, might be a great time to check out that gold contract. Uh, he's got a little volatility in there, um, and I'll let, leave it at that. Everything we do, folks, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so check it out on the front page of TFNN. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on, jumping down the line with some of the stocks. Logitech, lower 20% drop in sales from a year earlier as the maker of computer mice, keyboards, and other peripherals faced tough comparisons to a pandemic-fueled surge last year. I'd say, yeah, they're, 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 that's a tough one, man. Everybody built out their home office, right? There's Logitech down 4%. You take a look at a longer-term time frame, man. This is kind of what I was talking about to Kevin. You know, some of the pullbacks here, folks, 140 to 63, and it's not stopping on Logitech. Uh, and they are a strong company going forward, folks. They've gotten some big upgrades this year. One company called them, I think, the, you know, Focus Buy, something like that. But not just yet. They're down 4.3% on some tough numbers with a 20% slowdown on a yearly basis. Let's see. Uh, Chegg. So online education. Yeah, they are tanking. Check out this one. So I guess people prioritizing working versus learning. Man, some of these pullbacks. 115. Are you kidding me? To 16 bucks? Where is this thing going? back to almost where you were in 2013, probably when it went public. You traded to 11.25, you're sitting at 16.26 right now. And I would expect that that thing could go lower if you're down 35% in one day, folks. Watch out, man. Hilton, so let's jump over to Hilton Worldwide. They get their numbers out. That's gonna be a long-term chart. Uh, decent acceleration from COVID. This morning though, you're down about 3% on their numbers. So Hilton, they beat estimates by six cents. They made 71 cents. A rebound in travel demand issued a lower than expected full year outlook. That is the reason they're down about 3% on their numbers to 150.93. Let's see, Biogen, their CEO is gonna be stepping down. He's gonna stay on until a successor is filed. They basically came in at estimates and uh, I guess the stock's probably pretty close to flat. You're up 1.7% on their numbers as they come in. Expedia. So. Speaking of travel, there's a problem, folks. Down 9.2%. We jumped to Expedia. They lost 47 cents a share, less than the 62 loss that the market was looking for. Revenue exceeded estimates. Uh, they gained. No, they did not gain. They they gained last night, but boy, the market is punishing them, man. And just like that, 
you are back to where you were trading at in Expedia in February of 2021 after trading up to 271. And that, folks, so 271, that was after their last earnings in February 14th, less than three months ago. You're trading at 158. Is the market rolling over just a little bit? s and is down 11 right now. Uh, Avis, yeah, the car rental company. It's a good time to be owning a car rental company. Uh, they were up 7% much better than expected quarterly profit and they also announced a three billion dollar increase in its share repurchase authorization uh the car companies oh they give it back though just like that man you charge higher on their earnings last night whatever happened on the conference call i guess just the market opened and you give it back it's a dicey scenario man i mean they crushed it right they crushed it and they're barely positive right now you take a look at the longer term time frame now this car company remember um the Wall Street traders love this thing. Got a little bit bonkers up to 545 at one point. You're sitting at 280. 300 looks to be a little bit of a head uh, for Avis. All right, I'm going to jump to I, met, I mentioned the housing market. There was an interesting article out here on Bloomberg this morning I was reading. The hot housing market makes the Fed's inflation fighting job even tougher with mortgage rates going up, but underlying demand still strong policymakers may have to hike higher. Just one of the risks you should be thinking about, folks. All right, we all have our personal biases. What I'm trying to do is put out as much information out there that you can be aware of the risks, where they were, where they are, where the possible rewards are, okay? This housing market is a risk when you think about that if it still persists higher, folks, and those costs are rising, that is inflationary. And to get a hold of that, they'd have to hike even higher. Something to think about as this market marches forward, because getting a hold of inflation where it is right now is not going to be easy, to say the least. Uh, officials are counting low on the higher mortgage rates to throw cold water on the frenzied housing market as they work to tame the highest inflation in decades. But the market may not cool fast enough. That is the key there. OK, rising rates, higher home prices. They are locking buyers out. My dad uh, did a great program last Friday. You can head on over to our YouTube page, folks. Uh, so what would last Friday be? That would be April 29th, Tom O'Brien's show. He was on there with Best for Behuli, uh, talking real estate. And one of the things they went through is the straight out math of what happens to a monthly payment when you get just a rise from about 3% to 5%. Uh, and it's a substantial rise, folks. In some cases, you go from maybe paying 1200 bucks a month to paying close to 1800 bucks a month for the same exact property. 50% increase in your monthly payment. That is going to impact the market. So, yes, there will probably be an impact, but where that actually starts to come about, we will see. Um, average 30-year fixed mortgage back about 5%, as we know. You go from 5 in 2019, you make it all the way down to 2.7% at the end of 2020, and, man, it's been quite a rise since we kicked off the year. Think about it. We had the mortgage rate at 3% to kick off the year. You're at 5% now on that mortgage rate. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories I had up here. Pfizer, uh, with their numbers, they cut 2020 earnings outlook despite strong first quarter COVID vaccine and antiviral sales. They now expect, so this is the outlook, 625 to 645, a slight decrease from where they were. They beat on the top and bottom line in the first quarter, driven by strong sales of the vaccine and oral antiviral treatments. $13.2 billion of the vaccine and $1.5 billion of the antiviral treatment Paxlovid in the first quarter. You jump over to P Pfizer shares. And they're down about eight tenths percent. A little bit of volatility on their numbers, but basically almost flat. You take a look at the longer term time frame of where we've been with Pfizer, well off the highs of 61 bucks, man, of where we came into the new year. We're trading at about 47.87. Let's jump around to some of the travel stocks as we come into this break. You got Delta right now, down about half a percent, trading at 42.47. Pretty decent pop in the last six weeks or so for Delta, two months almost now, from about 30 bucks. You're up almost 40% from that low, folks, trading at 42 bucks on Delta. You jump to United, United right now basically 550 21. You jump domestically, JetBlue. Yeah, JetBlue's in trouble, man. I love JetBlue. They've had some great fares from Tampa to Boston. I remember when they st first started servicing Tampa. Uh, great airlines, one of the first airlines that had like great, nice TVs, nice new planes. Um, but boy, they got some issues right now, folks. You're trading at 
$8.20, almost cut in half from where you were a year ago. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. We're going to talk a little bit about Larry's live trading workshop coming up. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I post the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the market right now. We're sitting negative one point in the S&P. Excuse me, two points make it. NASDAQ negative by 51. Uh, pretty tame market to kick things off. And yeah, we're going to wait until 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Uh, very possible. That is 28 hours from right now. We got a Fed announcement. One half hour after that, we get a press conference. It'll be an interesting one, to say the least, folks. Jumping back to the front page of TFNN.com, folks, our man Larry Pesmento. He has a live trading webinar coming up two weeks from today. He'll be in there all trading day, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. I say all trading day, folks. Uh, the reason why Larry sets this up from 9 till 2 is that he very rarely trades for the final two hours of the day. So there's where the action is, uh, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time. I think I recall how many he said. I think he said he's going to try and get at least like six trades in there, maybe one an hour, something like that. Don't hold me to that one because I think I just heard him say that on his show. But he'll be in there live trading, folks, two weeks from today. Now, the cost to attend, $295. If you are a subscriber to Larry's daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7, okay, you get one month free included. The better way to say that is people who attend Larry's live trading course, a month of his newsletter is included, which is a $97 value. If you're already signed up for Larry's newsletter and you sign up for this course, your next newsletter payment will be skipped. So there's where you gain the $97. If you are not signed up for Larry's Fibonacci 24-7, you get a month of that service included in this. Okay, so when you sign up is when you receive Fibonacci 24-7. I mention that because... There's no reason to wait until Tuesday, May 17th to sign up, folks. I encourage you to sign up today. 
You gain access to Fibonacci 24-7, and this live trading webinar will be taking place at our Discord server. For the first time, Larry will be doing this in the Discord server, all right? Not within the Tiger's Den. We set up a separate channel for those who have signed up for the live trading webinar. If you're in the Tiger's Den, it's as simple as you'll be granted access. You'll be able to click on the button within the Tiger's Den trading room uh, for special access to this live trading room. But again, I encourage you to sign up early, folks, because if you're not in the room, you got to get into our Discord server. It does not take more than just a few minutes, practically. But please don't wait until the end on this one, okay? Because if everybody signs up at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, May 17th, and they have to get in the Discord room, we're going to take a few minutes to get you in there. Now, this will be archived as well. All five hours will be archived. And folks, there is no better time than right now in this market than a live trading webinar when we got the S&P trading up and down two and a half percent and look at this chart you can't even see the volatility because we've moved so much you got 4300 in here you got 4040 thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me folks stay tuned our man basil's up next larry at 11 live programming all day folks